on. That's a big fish, guys. The best fishing day I've probably had in a long time. Some people call them Johnny Crappy Seeds. Well, fish nuggets. Oh, let's try it. around we don't play baby let's go baby this one's going back though. what is up guys welcome back to another mainstream adventure as you can see we're not on the stream once again we're on the ice looks like we got some marks down there again i don't love fishing these deeper waters but this is where the fish are. Ooh, big ice crack there. What is up, everybody? I'd like to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Game Ticks. Your memories at your fingertips. It's an awesome app. I'm gonna go ahead, pull it up on my phone and tell you some more about it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I like Game Ticks over other apps. So first of all, I don't really use Facebook anymore. It's a lot of people arguing over politics or other content I don't really care about. Also, it's where your hunting photos go to die. Either removed by Facebook for not following their community policies or buried over the years and just too difficult to find. GameTix is a social media platform for outdoor enthusiasts, including hunters, trappers, anglers, and outfitters, where you can save your memories and share your experiences. But unlike other apps like Facebook, your posts will never be removed and photos will never get lost. With GameTix, you can pin all of your harvests on your personal map and organize them both chronologically and by game type. So when you're sitting around a fire with friends reminiscing about that moose you got last year, you can open up GameTix, pull up a pic in seconds, and show it off. You can customize posts by weight and device to earn points and rank on the leaderboard. And if you don't want to share your favorite hunting and fishing spots, that's fine. You can easily make them private. It's a logbook of your outdoor adventures available for free for life. So you can share your experiences with loved ones and they have a record of your personal stories long after you're gone. It's free on the app store or go to gametix.com. G-A-M-E-T-I-K-S.com. on good fish too <laughs> yes guys we're frying up crappy tonight on the buckshot jig that's another good one guys it's not huge but that'll eat here let me drop back down though i still got crappy stacked up here i do have to keep them kind of no matter what the size because i'm fishing 37 feet so the chances of them surviving that release is pretty slim so i guess guys it's as good as a time of any to say that we're gonna be doing a quick catch and cook today one that I've never done before in my life uh, black crappy kind of a more not I wouldn't say rare it's actually an invasive species here in Maine I love it guys crappy fishing is so much fun I just I'm getting more into jigging of course the classic um, means of fishing around here in Maine is at least during ice fishing season is, is using traps which you've seen me do plenty of times so this buckshot spoon that I'm using from Northlands it's has a few to call the buckshot because it has a few little pieces of uh, steel or lead that make a nice rattling noise and that really brings the fish and attracts the fish to the area sometimes it's a little bit bulky but that's why i've got on this setup a jig head with actually one of the crappy that i just caught eyeballs which works pretty good believe it or not it's a bit brutal so oh toothy bugger so there's one beautiful main crappy it's gonna eat awesome and here this guy's a little bit uh don't look at that side of him but there's the other so i'm out in this basin as you can see up here fishing the 37 feet the reason for fishing these basins basins is because a lot of insect life worms bugs everything just gather up in these basins so that's going to be where these crappy love to feed i'd like to be fishing a little bit shallower so i could be a bit more picky with my harvest because like i said if i try to release even some of the smaller fish and fishing in these depths after being pulled from the bottom the chances of them making it are very very slim to none. So I'll keep them all, they'll all make delicious little fillets. I can't wait to share this catch and cook with you guys. Stay tuned, hopefully we can catch a couple more. And here's our setup. Cheapo, cheapo jig rod. Something did just, I think, come up and hit that though. Got a small mark coming up and inspecting it. Let's see if I can nail it. We got three fish stacked up on the screen. I should be able to pull one of them out of here. Come on. On, on, on. on. Feeling like another crappy, guys. It is beauty, beauty crappy. 
Man, these are toothy buggers. These cold water crap, they are hard, hard species. Those are gonna make some delicious golden crispies. I gotta get back down there because there's still another good size mark there. Big advantage with running these heavier lures, typically, whoops, I'd go lighter, but I can get down there to that 30 foot range much, much quicker. And I was gonna make something to eat, but I don't know if I'll have time to do that. Maybe I'll just snack on a piece of cheese or something. I'm going to quickly reel up, check my bait. Oh, would you look at that? Clean me and my bait. There's my baited hook, a piece of an eyeball, and a tail. Crappy eyeball on the hook. Works pretty good. Learned that from the Midwestern boys. On. Oh, it's Northland Spoon, guys. It's working good. This doesn't feel very big. Oh, that's a little guy. A little crappy right there, guys. Awesome. Now, I don't know if you can see that deeper red mark, but I've got a fish looking right at my lure. Pull it up away from him a little. See the separation there? See how there's two lines? Drop it back down slow. He came right back at that. Come on. Have something to eat. Aren't you hungry? It's good soup. That is our harvest so far. Might try and pick off one more. Crappy fishing is so much fun, and like I've said already a dozen times, like I always do, the meat is delicious. One of the best eating fish here in Maine, I think. Crappy, white perch. It's weird that people call these fish trash fish or like they're an invasive species, but I don't want to diss the trout community, but I'd rather eat the crappy than a trout, really, I think. They, I can't wait to fry them up. Knees weak, arms are heavy. Fish guts on his sweater already. Keeps on forgetting what he tied on. Everybody's flags are flying. Snap back it's reality. I've always wanted to make a uh, fish a remix of a song that's. Oh, Come on, come eat some. I know you like that. Is this thing on, darling? On. That's a big fish, guys. Sorry about the stand up every time. That's how I get hooks at. That's a good fish, guys. I'm happy with that. Holy sweetness. I got another mark down there again. Oh man, guys, my I usually do pretty good in the cold, but my hands are freezing. Another one bites the dust, guys. Drop back down there, because there's another two. Oh, oh, don't do one of those, Chris. Now is not the time, brother. I can't even press my dropper reel button in. My hands are so cold. Let me know, if you do go ice fishing, what is your favorite species to catch? Leave it in the comments. Again, I think I've said it in previous videos, but this is like the most entry level fish finder you can get for the most part. That is, it's super functional. It's a Garmin striker. This is pretty killer crappy fishing. Exactly what I needed on this beautiful, cold Maine afternoon. Might as well kind of explain to you guys. So, like I said, crappy in Maine, uh, they are invasive. They're not supposed to be here. I'm not sure exactly how long, how many years exactly they've been here. Basically people going around, keeping the fish alive and bringing them into ponds like this or connecting waters, stalking them on their own. Some people call them Johnny Crappy Seeds. You can imagine why. It's the same way that the Northern Pike was introduced to this area. Bass is a different story. Some people will call it an invasive species, but there was also a time where the state stalked bass in a lot of our smaller warm waters here in Maine. Well, it's pretty much the entire country, but the Midwesterners really kill it in the crappie game. Of course, Jay Siemens, he just started doing some crappie fishing up in Canada, which is interesting to see that they're way up there as well. I mean, I enjoy catching them, and like I said, they eat really good. I'll check back with you if we get another mark on the screen. Whoa, we got one coming up. He's coming in hot. Coming in hot. We got one on. One coming up. On. Oh, that's a... That's a good one. That's a good one, guys. Oh. Okay, guys, I am ending it on that one. A little bit, honestly, larger than I'd like to keep. But again, in this deeper water, you just don't want to risk releasing them and just having them go topside underneath the ice. Again, it's a barometric pressure change thing that they just don't like. So, beautiful fish. Okay, guys, here's what we got for a haul. Two, we got 15 inches right there. So two big ends right around 15. And these are the smaller ones over here, all in like the 10 to 14 range. That's going to be seven fish. That is more than enough for a fish fry. This is the best fishing day I've probably had in a long time. So much fun. These ones up here, 
are some dang dinner plates. Those will be a meal on their own. So happy, guys. I'm just absolute mess of a setup here. Got my pack basket. Finally got my Makita working with my Mora auger. Means I don't have to hand drill holes. It's been actually very sweet. I already dropped it down through the ice one time when I was testing it. But this time, guys, like I said, this could not have been a more perfect fishing trip. I drilled two holes and I only really fished this one hole that you see me catching all the fish in. There's one more back there, but just on them and they were biting hard. The Northland spoon there is what got it done. Tipped with either a bit of shiner or a black crappy eye. Either one, they were loving the eye. I actually, next thing we're gonna do is fillet these. So I'll get back to you when I'm doing that. Got a mature bald eagle over there and a young one right there. Beautiful creatures, listen to them. Like dinosaurs, velociraptors. Hey, you know who they're yelling at, right? Either they're yelling at each other or they're yelling at me because they want me to get of them a fish or something. Here's train. Locked, loaded, and ready to head back and clean some fish. Hey guys, I'm out here flying out these crappy. First thing I do is just give them a little snow just to clear off some of that slime. The way I fillet a crappy, I don't even bother gut them. Incision right behind its front fin there, straight line down. Incision right at the top of his dorsal fin there. Crappy actually surprising. They have some thick scales on them. There we go. Top started. Then just work your way down the rib bones. Roll on that flesh back. As you get down to the tail portion, you can go all the way through. Break them off at the tail. And just work them back to his belly ribs. Right there at the end of his ribs, off the bottom. Southern crappy. If you guys catch them, they'll have a good amount of belly meat on them down here. Ours just do not. It's like literally a layer of skin. So we're just taking his back strap, basically. You could definitely scale these fish whole. Maybe I'll save one and cook it that way. Freeze them up and I'll scale them first and then freeze them, of course. Do a whole fish cook out on the ice or something. So again, straight down, down his back, out his tail, roll them. Ribs get right to the skin. Come through there. The rest of them off, just like that. Another one real quick. This one of the big ones here, or medium sized ones, depending on where you are. Come down the back, stay out of the ribs until we get to the tail. And we can come out, Just use the tip of the knife to stay in that meat rib cage. This play board's good, I just gotta screw it down to probably a piece of wood and make it a little less slick. Leave a comment if I'm doing something wrong, I'm sure you guys will. That's it guys, sleeves the guts and the frame of them basically. Now let's get to frying. Oh, actually, nope, let's not get to frying yet. One of these fillets. It's useful to have like a fork for this part. There we go. There is our delicious crappy fillet. Give that a rinse and a little soak for some time. Some people do milk, but I'm just gonna do water. Soak them and they're ready to fry. Beautiful, delicious white meat, it's gonna be Perfect, flaky. I can't wait to show you the fried final product. Again, I'm probably gonna get roasted from you pros who can, you got your electric knives, clean a crappy in 30 seconds or less probably. And I'm sure some of you guys are gonna say, oh, why don't you just eat the entire fish whole? If that's what you're into, go right ahead. I'm doing what I do. Y'all know what's gonna happen with the scraps, is these are gonna go out to the woods and I guarantee there's gonna be some happy everything. Foxes, especially foxes. There's a beautiful fox around here. Guarantee she'll get on that pretty quick once I put it out back. There it is, guys. That's not all the fish from the seven that I caught. That's about, I think it was two, two and a half that I'll do on camera. But I just have to rinse these, uh, bread them and drop them in the grease and I'm gonna show you the final product. This fish, it's top tier, guys. Tell me what your favorite fish that you catch, or I guess even from the store, to eat is. This is up there with my favorite. It's comparable to Haddock, if you've had that.
What is up guys? Welcome to the cooking portion. I know it's kind of been jumping around. I'm back out on the ice if you can see that. It's like 15 degrees out, but what we're going to do is fry up a few of these delicious crappy fillets. So I've got some butter heating there. I know, I know, roast meat, it's not healthy to fry things in butter, but it's gonna be some good, I'll tell you that. There I have some of the crappy fillets. I have an egg wash. And then there I have seasoned flour. Today I seasoned it with some jerk seasoning. I'm gonna try something a little different. It smelled nice and spicy, so I think it will go good with this crappy, so. This is actually my first time cooking on the ice, I think, for the video guys. So, I've got a flour. Grab our crappy with that open. Kind of move quick, guys, because everything's gonna freeze up on me. It is chilly. Okay. Oh, spill egg on me either. Into the egg wash. And I'm just gonna claw that out of there like an animal. Try and get that open. Into my flour. Give that a roll down and good shaking. Put in a test piece here. Just a little bit longer. That wind is killing me though. I need to make a windshield for this thing. I'm using my tackle boxes right now. Crappy fillets are going in. That butter's hot. Well, fish nuggets. Careful, I don't want to overcrowd the pan. <laughs> Not much of a presentation there, guys, but would you look at those golden fish nuggets. I am hyped. <laughs> that was a bit more of a struggle than I expected. I literally had to stop multiple times just to warm up my hands, but trying to bring you guys some cool content, filming out here in the beautiful Maine woods rather than just, again, cooking in the back of my car or going back to the kitchen and cooking up these crappy. Figured I'd come out, try and catch a fish. Haven't caught one yet or even gotten a bit bite, but I'm about to have a bite of this crappy. Let's let's have a taste, a taste test. Let's get a nice piece and show you. Won't take long to cool down. Oh, look at that. It smells delicious. Oh, let's try it. Oh my goodness, that is good. Oh, guys, winner, winner, crappy dinner. They might want to run and hide. Thank you guys for sticking around for this long. This was literally the most epic day of crappy fishing for me. I had so much fun, caught tons of awesome size fish and got to flay them up and eat them all, oh gosh, oh my. Don't know how I feel about the jerk, it's got an interesting interesting flavor to it. It's not as spicy as I was expecting. I thought jerk was a... It's good though, I like it. I probably won't fry in butter again. That was a little bit extreme. I don't think I've ever done that before either, but. It was just easier than trying to bring out a bottle of oil. Thank you again for watching. Another mainstream adventure. Lots more ice fishing content coming here soon. Got an interesting one. I think it'll be the next video. It, you talk about a real life survival situation. It kind of turned into that real quick. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully gonna be targeting some lake trout here or togue as Mainers call them pretty soon too. So that should be fun. Thank you guys again. I can't say it enough. Peace until the next time. Mind if I do, do, do? Let's see. <laughs> that sounds weird. Look at me. It's white, flaky. Cooked nicely through. Not too bad for an invasive species.